So I was right. I had suspected it would take more than a mere fall to put pay to the darkspawn. Sir Hendrik. Can it really have been so many years since that fateful night, Princess? To see you alive and well, you cannot imagine how much this pleases me. But, should you choose to continue to side with the Child of Darkness, you may not live for much longer! Look, I know how you feel about duty, Hendrik. How could I forget? You don't understand how important this is. Please, you have to let us go! You would ask a sworn knight of Heliodor to disobey the orders of his king? You have been away from home too long, girl. Not long enough for the years to have changed you. Still loyal to a fault. I wish it didn't have to come to this. But it has. Impressive, Princess. The spirited young girl of old has grown into quite the warrior maiden. Oh, please. I'm not a child anymore. It'll take more than a pat on the head to distract me. And what will it take to convince you that I am deadly serious? That if you stand on the side of the Darkspawn, I will have no choice but to destroy you! Yeah. Patrick! Princess! I'm sorry. Get on! Now hold on tight. Princess, what have you become? One piece, too. Just about. No thanks to Hendrik and his men. So it was old Hendrik, was it? Uh, I thought it might be. I would have liked a wee word with the rascal, but... I doubt he'd have told us much. Well, if even he's out for your blood, the forces of evil must have a stronger hold in Heliodor than ever. First time a once glorious kingdom had been brought low by monstrous powers, you know. Many, many years ago, a dastardly fiend destroyed an entire empire with his wicked ways. A legendary evil named Mordegan. His story is all but forgotten these days. I had to tramp halfway around the world just to learn his name. But the more I find out about him, the more I'm convinced he's the one behind all this. Which is why you're going to have to stop him, laddie. You're the luminary, after all. You were born to defeat the Dark One. But you'd be more than foolish to face him unprepared. Then we must make our way to Yggdrasil as soon as we can. The legends of Arborea tell of a means of fighting the darkness that can only be found there. Veronica, that must be why we're supposed to take him there, mustn't it? Here you are, laddie. It's yours at last. You'll be needing it if you're to make your way to the World Tree. If anyone can get this old stick to show us the way, it's you. Well, can you see anything? Don't 
tell me it's a dud? If that Noah sent us in a wild goose chase, I'll throttle him! He could have told us it didn't work before we wasted a zillion hours chasing it halfway across the world. No, no, let's not jump to conclusions. Why don't Jade and I join you and we'll see if we can't make our way a bit closer to Yggdrasil and try again. We'll not give you any bother. I promise. It's... Darlings, did you see it? It was so pretty. A sort of platform floating in the sky and six colored orbs. <gasps> oh! I think I understand. We need to find the orbs and take them to the platform and then the path to Yggdrasil will appear. Maybe trekking halfway around the world to find that branch wasn't such a waste of time after all. And we've already got one of the orbs we need, too. I knew swiping this thing from the castle was the best idea I ever had. I had my own plans for it. But this is way more important. It's yours now. Just don't lose it, okay? Our prize from the tournament. Lucky we didn't sell it in the end, eh? Aye. And there I was all set to swap it for a few piffling trinkets for the road. It's yours now, though, laddie. Now, it looked like that platform we saw was located right under Yggdrasil. That means it must be somewhere deep inside the first forest. So, we know where we have to go. We just need to find the other four orbs first. But where in the world would we even begin to look? Orbs, orbs. Oh, I do remember a fairy tale about a giant pearl sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Well, if we don't have any real clues, I guess we'll just have to head out into the world and find some. Uh, you're not wrong there. In which case, let's head for Puerto Valor. A fairly straightforward voyage, if you ask me. And you'll be pleased to hear that I'm friends with Don Rodrigo, the big man over that way. I'm sure he'll open the sea gates for us. <sighs> Right then, let's get moving, shall we? Darlings, I'll see you when you're finished here in town. I need to go and see a man about a... Uh, 
Ciao for now! What came over him all of a sudden? Don Rodrigo lives in that grand old place over yonder. Oh, and uh, don't go mentioning my royal past, will you? As far as he's concerned, I'm just his old pal, Rab. After so many years. Good to see you looking so well, Cervantes. Ah, lo siento, senor, so sorry. But I am afraid he has gone to Eliador. Ah, now that's a shame. I do so love our wee chats about fighting and horses and fighting. Don Rodrigo will be sorry to have missed you too, senor. Well, I'm sure we'll have a chance for a proper chinwag next time I'm in town. Now, there's something I was wanting to ask you, Cervantes. I was hoping to head out to sea in search of more interesting topics of conversation. You couldn't open the sea gates for me, could you? It will be my pleasure, Senor Roberto. Can you imagine how angry Don Rodrigo would be if I refused? <laughs> I will open them right away. If you go on board your ship, you will be able to sail straight through. You're a good man, Cervantes. Thanks a million. And give my regards to Don Rodrigo, won't ye? There's our pal, Cervantes. Give him a nice thank you wave, everybody. Thank you. Madre mia. Is it him? 
Where did all this horrible fog come from? I can't see a thing. Hey, Sylv, what's going on? I'm truly mystified. But whatever it is, I don't like it. Steering hard a starboard! See light up ahead. Where in the world are we? What a strange place. It's almost like being in a dream. <gasps> oh, darling, is it really you? My dearest darling, Kai? I've waited for you ever since the day we said goodbye. Oh. 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 like that. most other human beings that I've met. My name's Michelle. I'm sorry if I gave you all a fright. It, it's just I thought my car was back and I got all excited. Wow. I can't believe I'm talking to a real live mermaid. But anyway, who's this car you keep talking about? He's a tender-hearted fisherman from Lona Lulu Bay. He promised he would meet me here upon our wedding day. Your wedding day? 
I didn't even think humans and mermaids could get married. At first I was the same. I thought we'd never be together. I thought the mermaid's burden would keep us apart forever. For if a mermaid leaves the sea and makes the land her home, if ever she gets wet again, she melts away to foam. But when I told my Kai I couldn't come to live with him, he said, in that case, Shell, you better teach me how to swim. And so I got the blessing of the Queen beneath the sea. He's going to come to Nautica and live down there with me. Oh, that's wonderful news. Congratulations. But he's supposed to meet me here so we can be together. And I've been waiting for him now for what feels like forever. I know he'd never break his word. He's not that sort of person. But the longer that he stays away, the more my worries worsen. I know it's rude to ask you, but I beg, I plead, I pray. Could you go to Lona Lulu and make sure my Kai's okay? Hmm. So you're from the bottom of the sea, where the giant pearl from the story went. I wonder... Aha! How about this? If we go and check on your fiancé, Will you take us down to see the Queen? To pay for such a kindness, it's the least that I can do. I'll sing my song and safely sink your ship and all your crew. If anyone knows the truth about this giant pearl, it's the Queen of the Sea. If it... Thank you, thank you, all of you. I'd be indebted to you. If you could try to find him in the town of Lona Lulu. Mark the village on your map. It's to the east of Hotto. A beautiful blue bay behind an isolated grotto. My Kai is a famous fisherman, as ragged as the ocean. A hanky chanky sailor stuffed with smouldering emotion. Oh, now I'm all embarrassed. <laughs> Don't tell him what I said. Just bring my darling back so we can finally be wed.
Lulu, a seaside paradise that Shell tells me is home to the prettiest pals in all the world. <gasps> Ooh, pals! Bright blue waves, pure white sands, and fabulous jewels just lying on the beach. Truly, darlings, this is the promised land. seem a little less promising than I expected. Where is everybody? Something's not right here. Still, it's not our problem.
about to begin! <laughs> Are you all paying attention? Good. Then I'll tell you the tale of the terrible curse that befell our village long ago. The curse of a crafty creature with a face as pretty as a pearl, but a heart as black as coal. Now, let's begin. Once upon a time, a master fisherman lived in Lanalulu. He caught more fish and gathered more pearls than any of the other men in the village. The mayor of Lanalulu, the big kahuna, was very fond of this fisherman and offered him the hand of his beloved daughter. The fisherman and the kahuna's daughter agreed to be married, and the future of the village looked bright. Until the day of the storm. The fisherman was caught up in a terrible tempest, and he and his catch were thrown into the ocean. As he sank through the water, he saw the pearls he had gathered shining like stars all around. But instead, he met her, a mermaid more beautiful than any creature he had seen before. She held him in her arms and whispered in his ear. I will give you your life if you give me your soul. Many days passed and the fisherman did not return. The people of the village thought him dead and held a funeral for him on the beach. But just as they were beginning to sing his soul into the next world, he appeared, exhausted but alive. The kahuna's daughter was overjoyed to have her beloved home and stayed by his bedside night and day, nursing him back to health. But the fisherman was no longer the man she knew. All day he would stare out to sea, muttering over and over, I must marry that mermaid. Then one day, he threw his fiancée aside and ran to the harbor, screaming, I must go back to her! The kahuna was furious. He banished the fisherman from the village and burned his boat so he could never set sail again. And so, the man who was once the pride of Lanalulu spent the rest of his days alone on Saikiki Beach, haunted by the mermaid who stole his soul. That's all for today, children. I'll tell you the rest of the story tomorrow. Mermaids are scary! Whoa! The mermaids coming to steal our souls! Run! Aloha, friends. Is there anything I can do for you? Maybe. We're looking for a fisherman called Kai. Do you know where we can find him? Oh, my! What a coincidence! You must be looking for my son, Kainui. Are you friends of his? I'm afraid he's not here at the moment. All the men have sailed west to fight the giant squid that's been attacking our ships. If you want to hurry things along, maybe you could go lend a hand. Once that monster's dealt with, they'll all come back to the village, sure enough. But be wary, friends. 
squid isn't the only danger out on the seas. Don't let a crafty mermaid make you all pupule. <laughs>